and the operation as we've heard from the leader. An economic development unit to drive forward our priorities of major investment opportunities and job creation for future generations. The unit, the future generations, sorry. The unit's brief will be to ensure we capitalise on the unparalleled opportunities now within our grasp. This, I believe, Mr Mayor, will have major positive implications. Mr Mayor, these savings, don't forget, are against a background um, of unfair and un unequal cuts. A red herring, according to uh, Councillor Green. Um, we see, as, as we've heard many times, more leafy areas of the south hardly being touched compared to up north. And this comes from mainly urban councils in their calculations based on cuts already published um, through and changes in local funding to come, who suggest that the average council, as we've heard in the north, will lose over £600 per person compared to those with three to five in the south east by 2017 18. And you've got to ask the question, Mr. Mayor, it's simply part of the opposite. Why aren't we shouting to their government? Because obviously the council agreed then doesn't believe it. And to stop the unfair, yes, and I'm going to lift that. To stop this unfair treatment and short changing of the will. Um, and of course, the MP, who we don't hear from. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, people's cost of living is also affected um, in the wider context by the reduced <laughs> state allowances that were only mentioned in two sentences recently in George Osborne's recent statements. These changes are occurring because universal credit work allowances will not be kept at their current level for three years from April 2014. The freezing of the work allowances, Mr Mayor, in universal credit disproportionately affects households in employment and in the bottom half of the income distribution. This group, Mr Mayor, is likely to benefit, it, it, it's less likely, should I say, to benefit from further increases in the personal tax that we go on about. The decision, Mr Mayor, to reduce the work allowance in universal credit by not operating because inflation will be a real blow to the working poor. It's a sort of stealthy measure that attracts little attention but still has a real impact. Reducing work incentives and family incomes in this way is another attack on the standards of the poorest and is also directly at odds with the government's stated objective of making work pay. Mr Mayor, to conclude, with this budget we have listened to what people told us during the consultation. Growth items to create more jobs and attract investments. A commitment to looking after the most disadvantaged people, people, those living on the red line, without hope under the government <coughs> policies forced upon them by this coalition's government's onslaught on widows working poor, uh, with the disgraceful support of the party opposite, shows no signs of slowing down. Mr. Mayor, I urge, I urge members to support Labour's budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Well, well 
and all over the law. The second issue of concern is the move to halt in delivery of this service. Halt may very well have a place in some service delivery models, but for children's services, a point made by a parent in the consultation concerned about plant pushing distances is very relevant. Finally, Mr. Mayor, I recall the main conclusion of Frank Field's report for David Cameron, entitled The Foundation of the Years Preventing Your uh, poor, poor Children uh, Becoming Poor Adults. His conclusion there uh, was that uh, children's life chances are most heavily predicated on their development in the first five years of life. I agree with that analysis. Some of the ideas in his report uh, are interesting and one fairly thought particularly his suggestion to open up the commissioning of children's centres or services within them to service providers from all sectors and to encourage mutuals and community groups to be able to help ensure that efficiencies are made. I'm just playing the front there. Well. <laughs> 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 um, uh, I mean, Mr. Lambo, I know it's important to play with your labour and um, pay your counsel when you time for them. Yes, the second recommendation made by Mr. Field was to encourage mutuals and community groups to be able to help ensure that efficiencies are made. Uh, but Mr. Uh, I don't want members to think I'm a total convert to the views of uh, Mr. Field. I read an article last week by him on the Spectator website where he gives some credence to some of the more junior studies into the contribution of genetics into educational campaigns, uh, which <coughs> was a uh, But then, as we say, um, thank you. Uh, but as we say, that's probably the fact. The fact. In conclusion, uh, I would say uh, to the leader, the farmer saving for children's centres uh, for this year uh, may well be achievable. Uh, I hope you will recognise the concerns I've raised about the target being suggested for subsequent years. I would ask you to have another look at the overall amount. The idea is that two million is too much. It takes us well below the median of our statistical uh, neighbours. I would ask you to reconsider the consultation feedback and, in particular, the written responses that accompanied them. And I would ask you finally to consider that it, that it might be the case that the impact of too great a reduction in funding for rural and students' residents may well be too much for us to bear in the long run. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, owing to the fact that the economy is now growing and that it will grow faster than any other G20 country next year, also given the fact that there are over a million more people in employment since 2010, the Labour Party, the Labour Party, more people by the way, to reiterate that. The Labour Party has changed its approach by dismissing these positive figures and instead choosing to make much of the so-called cost of living crisis. Therefore, I'm bewildered as to why the Labour group will choose to add to this crisis by considering increasing council tax for its residents. But Mr Mayor, let's be clear, the leader of the council insults our intelligence when talking of funding <coughs> reductions when he's happy to return funding direct to the Treasury to the tune of mm. around £6 million by the time of the next general election. This is in the form of the council tax debt, which will freeze council tax for hard-working rural residents, helping them in the difficult financial times created by 13 years of overspending by the previous Labour <laughs> <laughs> Mr Mayor, I fail to see that this is a rational way forward and that's the best interest of the working people at heart. Therefore, Mr Mayor, I commend our amendment to Council. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, can I um, respond to the uh, school crossing patrol? Um, can you say that the uh, funding for school crossing patrol across the world in the budget today is a <coughs> that is currently being considered and we are consulting at the moment? The main feature of this proposal is to seek the funding for the toll from schools in the world, and primary schools in particular. There are a total of just over 100 crossings. If each school agrees to purchase a service costing between four and five thousand pounds, 
there would be no change in service delivery, and each crossing would continue to be maintained and staffed as it is currently. At the moment, as I said, we're consulting. The matter has been discussed extensively um, this past year. The, uh, the convict primary school head has had discussions with all five primary head teacher cluster groups and with a number of secondary <coughs> heads. The matter has been raised at bottom of briefing, primary <coughs> head cons consultation group and school forum. No school that currently has a crossing has said they won't be paying in the future. The view seems to be that there will be continuing support for the service, although those schools that made no use of the patrol would not be willing to contribute. The general tone from head teachers is that they would accept this reluctantly, considering the uh, financial position of the local authority, with little time. However, the dialogue uh, with governors continues. Can I just say, at present, at present, there are balances of between 11 and a half and 12 million in school budgets. Um, in school budgets. In, in all school budgets. Um, and I'd like to say also that this is, is a non-statutory service yeah. and the key obligation on the local highway traffic authority relates to the general obligation under the Road Traffic Act to monitor accident trends, concentrations on the network, and take action as appropriate to correct those trends and reduce the number of recorded injury accidents. <coughs> Can I just say, we are putting it, we are suggesting that it is put into a training service. We've been forced to do this because of the um, awful cuts that have been imposed on us by the Tory Liberal Democrats. Yeah, 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 yeah. And can I just say, people out in the community are very aware of that. And certainly during the by election in Upton, the people who mentioned that to us on the doorstep was astonishing. They said, We know that you are having cuts of about 109 million. That it's almost impossible, it's almost impossible for a, a local authority to uh, do anything but try and manage the budget. And can I say, we are doing our very best in very, very difficult circumstances. It's not something, if we had to do, that we would have done. <laughs>
a voluntary scheme to allow employees to go and be together with dignity. We all recognise, Mr. Mayor, the need to make savings. It is the inherent unfairness which is key, the way the cuts have been applied and applied in a north-south divide that is so unfair. Picking up on a couple of points that have been made on the school crossing patrol, it's just been pointed out that schools have overall balances, surplus balances of about £11 million. Pounds. And the cost, many, many schools throughout this area already fund their school crossing patrols. And it's a very small percentage of the school's budget to repair four to five thousand pounds. Mr. Mayor, the point is we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be doing any of this without the appalling cuts that are being imposed on this council, and I urge council to vote for the Labour budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah.
even when we would fail to achieve it in previous years, <coughs> and, and still have no real plan to improve it. And we don't plan to up ahead. Uh, there are many proposals in this year's uh, budget which would be implemented far better if we started planning a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs>
can be uh, using the, um, of, of reducing the terms of the bonds you sell us, is for one year only. So Phil, what happens in 15, 16? What's your plan for that? We've not heard anything tonight. I don't know if you've got any ideas. I'd be interested. And then you, you come up with a, a wish list at the end of your amendments, which talk about 20 mile an hour zones, enhanced highway works, energy efficiency schemes. That's going to be paid for. Give us a hint how this is going to be paid for because the only way I can see this to be paid for is more borrowing, Mr. Mayor. More borrowing. And to borrow more money, that will have a revenue payback. It's about £100,000 for every million that you borrow. So if that costs, that which cost you £3 million, you're going to have to find £300,000 in more cuts to the revenue budget. So, in, in essence, uh, uh, Mr. 